What is up everybody, I'm your Legendary Commander, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3. In this video, I am going to show you how to rip Raphael a new one and all his minions as well. The first thing you need to do is just calm down. If you've already engaged him once and been like, oh crap, how do I get out of this? Trust me, it's not actually that bad. There is a way around this. There is a way to save yourself. Provided you're high enough level. I'd suggest being at least level 10 and on your way to level 11, because if you can manage to level up, that will give you level 6 spells, which are going to be very, very helpful, like the spell Disintegrate. Also, just being able to create better allies through, like, an Ice Elemental or even a Angel. Now, I'm also presuming you've already done the sex scene with the Devil Lady Man thing, or in some other form of fashion, found yourself at the Hammer and his other magical items that he has hidden. Go ahead and grab the Hammer and grab everything else as well. The gloves and the necklace are going to be very, very useful, uh, particularly if you have a character that may not be statted so well in those stats, and you could really help them out using those. Now, I promise right now, everything here is important. I'm not trying to jerk you around. The first thing you're probably going to be looking at is that necklace. It gives 23 to constitution. Now, you might be tempted to put that on a barbarian or a fighter, but honestly, I'm going to tell you, put that on somebody who has real low health. Shadowheart's a really good example. My Fighter Cleric is a very good example of this, as her constitution is really low, so this really, really helps her out. Although this would work really good on Shadowheart because her Divine Intervention, and I found Raphael really liked to target Shadowheart. You'll see by putting this necklace on, I go from 69 health to 119. And that goes up to 131 by the time I level up. That's twice the health for putting that necklace on. There's also a set of gauntlets. These gauntlets give you 23 strength. And now I have a fighter, Lizelle, that could really, really use it. Uh, she's a great fighter, and a little more damage would be great. But I also have a fighter cleric who happens to be a champion. And she's going to get that as well, as the improvement will be much more vastly helpful on her than it would ever have been on Lizelle. Lizelle has 20 points into her attributes. It's pointless to give it to her because she'd get one extra point of damage. Whereas my character would get a plus four to her modifier. Always make sure you have options. Now we're going to move on from making our characters better, and what I want you to do next is you're going to go ahead and start a fight outside that door. You were told if you walk out that door, everything's going to be on fire. It's not that bad, it's not even going to be that much on fire. That said, everybody out there is going to basically explode when you kill them. Uh, they aren't the real enemy, the enemy is what happens after they explode. Also the giant fireball that's going to attack you. Don't worry though, you can hide inside the room that you're currently in and just engage and step out to trigger certain things to happen. Some enemies can enter the room, but they're not that strong. Basically, though, feel free to throw as many spells as you want, because we're going to be able to replenish those spells. So unless you're really fragile, you don't have to worry too much, but you'll notice as soon as I step out this door, a giant fireball appears. Well, if you run back inside, you'll be generally safe. Uh, you really should not be dying in here. This is honestly easy work. And again, don't really worry too much. This is all pushover, cakewalk stuff. Now, honestly, getting out of this door is a bit tedious, but that's about all it is. It's just tedious. Uh, at some point, you're going to get out of this door, provided you take your time. And then, of course, one of my characters, or two of my characters, level up. Uh, you might as well get those levels. Might as well utilize them. They're not really too important at this exact moment. They'll just be important later, because who doesn't want an extra level? Now, once beating those enemies, we're going to push our way out of the door. We're going to go push out to the left... And we're going to want to follow that way about halfway through. You will run into another enemy. Don't worry about him too much. Throw a heavy spell. Bombard him with a bunch of arrows. Whatever you want to do to kill him. Just get rid of him. After defeating him, you're going to push up a little further. And you'll find another enemy. Once again, slay him very quickly. And then what you're going to do is push him to this room on the left. Now you may recognize this room. Maybe you don't. But you should have gone through this room at some point. If you didn't, you tried to be sneaky for some reason when you didn't have to sneak. I don't know why, but you'll find this room. It's got a restorative pool. It will give you everything you need back. Spell slots, action surges. The only thing it's not going to give you is abilities that are strapped to armor. So, for example, being able to cast Moonbeam with a staff, for example. Armor and weapon abilities seem not to be replenished. Also, you notice I leveled up again. If you have a character that can take Disintegrate, definitely take the Disintegration spell. It can be pretty helpful. Create Undead is not a bad one either. However, when I went to fight Raphael, they disappeared on me. It's perhaps best to use that one during the battle, or not at all. That said, my Planar Ally and my Elemental both stayed with me, and they were very, very useful. Also remember, your Elemental can now go from level 5 to level 6, and in my opinion, a Superior Elemental. 
Moving on, though, the restorative pull is unlimited, which means you can keep coming back to it anytime you're hurt at all. The only time you can't use it is during combat. So this is why I say start as many fights as you want, use all your spells, don't really worry, it's not a big deal. One more spell I do highly suggest you take is Hero's Feast. It heals those summons, not that you couldn't just resummon those summons, but what it also does is it gives a buff to all your characters and summons. It also gives you basically food, which you can keep spamming this for extra food. Basically, it's unlimited food. Now, when you're done in here, you're going to push out of this room and make another left. You're going to follow that way. You're going to run into a giant fireball that tries to kill you among some other few enemies. Don't worry. Just dump spells at it. And anytime you need to replenish your spells, come back here and get them. Just don't waste uh, armor abilities, things that might not return. Like, for example, Lazelle's Hunter's Mark. Save that for when the fight starts. Once you push through all the way to the opposite side of where you found the hammer, you're going to find Hope's little entrance. It's on the ground. You're going to click on it, and it's going to take you down below. By the way, if you have a wizard, make sure you assign your spells. If you're concerned at all what you're dealing with in here, don't worry too much. It's two spectators and a couple imps. While early level spectators may have been difficult, they are not much of a threat now. Especially when you can just spell dump. And that's pretty much what you're going to do here. Just try not to kill Hope in the process. The reason why we're here is to get Hope. Hope can cast Divine Intervention, which can be very useful in the fight. Once you defeat the spectators and the imps, what you're going to do is you're going to take that hammer you just collected and you're going to break those stones. Once you break the stones, you're going to take Hope and you're going to go back to the room where you've been healing, heal everybody, buff everybody, and then we're going to go on to the fight. By the way, if you didn't clear out the main room, there are going to be enemies there as well. Now, once you make it back to the main room where you entered from with the portal, once you click on said portal, it's going to start this sequence, and there's no way around it. This is the only way out, and at the same time, you are forced to fight Raphael. 90% of this dialogue is unimportant. However, there is a persuasion check to get that big devil to be your ally. Now, what I have noticed is it appears to be a bit glitched, at least on my end. It doesn't matter if I pass my persuasion check or not, no matter how many times I tried to make it work. I got it the first time. Uh, but then when I came back to do the video, I could not get it to work. But I did notice he kept showing up green. He kept actually being an ally, despite the fact. He's not the greatest help, but it's definitely better to have him on your side than not on your side. And he's actually still pretty helpful and lives pretty well. Make sure before you actually get to this point, save your game as well. Because I did have some freezing issues. And those freezing issues did not occur when I cast a counterspell to stop the particular devil from casting their spell. Now the biggest thing here is to be effective. Now you're going to unfortunately go last at the beginning of this and you're going to get hammered right off the bat. But what you're going to want to do, make effective use of AoE spells in particular. Uh, right now there are three devils that are paired off to the right. Those three devils can be hit with the Ice Elemental's Blast and do some extra damage. Another thing you want to make sure you're definitely doing is taking out those statues in the corner that are glowing. They are susceptible to force damage, which means spiritual weapons are great for getting rid of them. Maybe have Lazelle go break down another one. Those things are what gives Raphael his power, what makes him so deadly, and why he can kill you so quickly. If you remove those, he actually loses a lot of his abilities. Magic Missile wouldn't be another bad one to use, but make sure you're also dealing with the devils around you. The goal actually is not to kill Raphael at first, it's to kill all his support and anything giving him power. If you can kill all the devils around him and kill the structures, Raphael can be basically beat by he is no longer super super powerful. You just keep rezzing people and he's unable to kill people faster than you can res them essentially. I'd also suggest making careful use of divine intervention. Um, once you use it, you can never use it again. Hopes would be the one I'd use primarily. Shadowheart, for me, kept getting targeted, which made it very difficult to use Shadowhearts. Even when I used the Divine Intervention to res everyone, uh, which also gives all your spell slots back, which is amazing because now you can cast spells again. If, if for example, you casted your 6th level spell Disintegrate, missed, and or hit, now you can cast it again. Thankfully, I got mine off before Hope actually died. And unfortunately, Hope did perish, but I was able to get that divine intervention off, utilized it to its effectiveness, and then even ended up using Shadow Hearts, which I probably didn't need to do, but I did so anyway. Basically though, the goal again is to take out the structures with force damage, and then again probably using Lazelle to break down some of the structures. Then once that is pretty much over, your goal should be to defeat all the devils around you other than Raphael. You can take on Raphael and keep him busy maybe, but don't 
fixate on Raphael. Once they're all dead, you just kind of gang up on Raphael and just beat the crap out of him. And that is essentially how you beat Raphael. I really do suggest that you be at least level 10 working on level 11, if not being higher. The higher level, the better, because it just means it's that much harder for to kill you. But guys, with that, that is essentially how you beat Raphael. I hope you all have enjoyed this one. If you did, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Make sure to tell your friends. But, y'all take care. And I will catch you next time. Bye! -bye. Fought well. We could use such strength in the blood war.